But I can tell you when you get off a plane and you see a Brisbane male species in a Brisbane Broncos pair of shorts with a half a testicle hanging out, you don't feel like you're in a very polished city. Welcome to the Urban Property Investor. I'm your host, Sam Saggers, here to help you crack the code of real estate wealth. Today on the show, we're going to code crack the Brisbane property marketplace. Yes, it's the state of origin of property. We're going to cross the border and we're going to talk Brisbane real estate. Of course, I am speaking to you about Brisbane as a professional nomad. Yes, I'm a business Bedouin. And I have spent really part of the last 10 years of my life living and studying Brisbane, understanding what makes it tick, what locals love, what locals hate. And today I want to share with you my insights into the Australian property market and the place and city known as Brisbane. So I tell you what, kick back, relax, grab yourself a whiskey shot, grab yourself a cup of tea, whatever you choose is up to you. But it's time to kick off. And I tell you what, I've really enjoyed a lot of the feedback I've been getting like great text messages from across the ditch. My cousins in uh, New Zealand, cuz, everyone's like, hey, cuz, love the show, cuz. I want to reach out to you Kiwi fans. Thanks for, for tuning in. And I tell you what, Doing these podcasts from home are just so exhilarating. As I was explaining, I've got a Gospodar who lives next door to me. Apparently, Gospodar is a Romanian word, a Romanian word for a house-proud neighbor. I live next to the most house-proud Gospodar in the world. My Gospodar neighbor mows his grass, even though the grass does not need mowing. He is out there every day rolling a mower over the grass. Now, he could be a greenskeeper. Perhaps he's a greenskeeper. Perhaps he worked at a golf course for 45 years and recently retired, and his love affair with grass has come to his retirement. My Gospodar neighbor won't stop. However, I am determined to do this show despite my Gospodar mowing his lawn right now we are going to delve into Brisbane property, probably one of my most favorite marketplaces when it comes to owning real estate. I think Brisbane's a terrific city, a misunderstood city, and a city that I think by the end of this podcast, you're going to have a new appreciation for. When I first went to Brisbane as a young kid, I remember seeing it in a much different light. Probably my first ever experience in Brisbane was going up to see the Eka, a show in Brisbane, uh, really the Easter show of Brisbane, if it was the Sydney version. And what was so fascinating about Brisbane was it really was a small country town when I was there in the early uh, 1980s. And it has evolved so majestically ever since I've been going there. I can tell you, even 20 years ago, Brisbane was a little bit backwards. 20 years ago, you would get off an aircraft and you would be greeted by Brisbane male species wearing rugby league shorts with literally thongs on, standing at the gate. Brisbane was not a chic place. It was not, how can you say, yuppie-ish or, or ultra cool or chic or tr struggling for the word. But I can tell you when you get off a plane and you see a Brisbane male species in a Brisbane Broncos pair of shorts with a half a testicle hanging out, you don't feel like you're in a very polished city. However, this has not happened for two decades. 
Brisbane men now wear pants. And this is a massive, massive game changer as to how the Brisbane world is unfolding. Brisbane today is, in my view, a critical place for property investors to own real estate. In fact, when you think about investing, you're going to need a plan. Investing is a lot about you. You're going to need to sort out your finances. You're going to need to select properties, but you're also going to have to choose a marketplace to invest in. And for me, when you understand how Australia works, you really do comprehend that Australia is a unique place because it's very different to Europe, it's very different to America, which have literally thousands of cities. Australia doesn't really have that many cities at all where really the population is living. And 50% of Australians either live in Sydney, Melbourne and Brisbane. So it's so simple to be a property investor sometimes because understanding that more than 22 million people live in urban areas and 50% of Australians are living in Sydney, Melbourne or Brisbane really does make a lot of sense to invest some money where most people live. Uh, because most people live there, it is usually a telltale sign that that's where the demand is. So other than global cities, which in Australia are Melbourne and Sydney, we have new world cities. Australia has two really awesome new world cities, Brisbane and Perth. And new world cities are so interesting at a global level. New world cities include places like Boston. They include places like Seattle, places like uh, Berlin in Germany. Really the foundation of new world cities compared to global cities is new world cities build their economy, then invite population growth. They build their infrastructure then invite population growth. Brisbane has very advanced roadways. It has really less congestion than Sydney or Melbourne. The opposite happens in global cities. Global cities are usually overrun by people and struggle to keep up with infrastructure and change. New world cities are on the way to become global cities, but they absolutely have a better shot at getting it right. Think about how Sydney was created. It wasn't. It was literally a convict settlement that sprawled. Melbourne was mapped out, but Brisbane and Perth can map out future technologies. They can map out future infrastructure plans because they're just a little bit smaller. And as such, they have the ability to grow in a new world era. Think about all the jobs and new economies being created in the world right now. If you can link your city to be innovative and part of that world without carrying the costs of the old world, your city from a productivity point of view becomes extremely valuable. Now, I've done episodes in the past on smart cities, Songdu, South Korea, smartest city in the world. Brisbane puts up the argument in Australia that it is indeed the smartest city in Australia. In fact, the whole of Brisbane has a smart cities plan that it wants to innovate, grow and change. Brisbane for people that haven't been there or maybe did go there once and got off the plane and saw the Brisbane male species with the Brisbane Bronco shorts on and thought, Christ, I'm leaving, never to come back. Brisbane has evolved. And one of the things we need to understand about Brisbane is it is arguably the world's longest city. It stretches from the Sunshine Coast to the New South Wales border in Tweed Heads. It is literally 200 kilometres long. And as such, even though that incorporates the Gold Coast and the Sunshine Coast, as such, it is a complicated property market to buy in. Unlike Melbourne and Sydney, which really is 
is going through a shortage of usable premium places to invest in, Brisbane is huge. It is so long. And it really does make Brisbane what I call a street-by-street marketplace. Every suburb is going to have streets which are popular with locals. Every neighbourhood has the dress circle, which is where the best real estate is. Brisbane is kind of one of these cities which is hard for property investors to understand because there is so much to it. And there is so much available land for future use that as a property investor, we need to be both wary and excited about Brisbane. Remember, Brisbane from a maturity level is probably about 80 years behind Sydney. Think about where Sydney is today. It's Really, really hard to get around. There's way too many people. There's just congestion. Uh, There's no land left. So literally property values are kind of like really fought over in this high level, high price range kind of concept. For Brisbane, which really began its roots as a river port city and a convict settlement back 150 odd years ago, it has grown today to be home to 51% of Queensland jobs and 48% of Queenslanders live in Brisbane. The reason Brisbane is cheaper than Sydney and Melbourne, which have arguably just been trading a little bit longer in their history is Brisbane had to deal with the uh, a complete new city being invented on its doorstep, the Gold Coast. Back in the 1940s, people went to the beaches in the Gold Coast, but there was really no major population on the Gold Coast. By the 1960s, city planners had come up with the idea that they were going to robustly build a population centre and accommodation along the strip of the Gold Coast. This had a real historical adverse effect on soaring property values from a behavioural point of view in Brisbane. You can imagine... All of a sudden, a new city is created just an hour away and it's got beaches and lifestyle and it's it's pretty beautiful. All of a sudden, the population didn't need to condense and urbanize. It actually sprawled and suburbanized. And so where we are at with Brisbane and the Gold Coast is really the two cities now link. They are interlinked. You can get a train from the Gold Coast to Brisbane, and a lot of people do, and they do that from places like Helens Vale in the Gold Coast, arrive at work 45 minutes later in the CBD of Brisbane. Today, when we think about Brisbane and that 200-kilometre-long city, we have to realise it really is now one big hub And for the first time in the history of both the Gold Coast and Brisbane, the two cities now are linked together, making one big mega suburban and metropolis uh, dynamic, which is just amazing, just amazing. But you can imagine if Sydney, an hour away, had a big city being created next to it, that would create a value uh, change across the city. In other words, people would have more choice and as such, property values would uh, certainly filter out a little bit more. So when we look at the history of Brisbane, it has typically been quite affordable. However, as I've alluded to, 
that affordability is starting to disappear as the cities are now connecting and as we are starting to, for the first time to see a little bit of transformation around the availability of real estate in Brisbane. Remember, Brisbane is 200 kilometres long. My ultimate advice is to really learn a suburb and then the best streets and then uh, it is still a very much a street-by-street -street marketplace. Whereas sometimes in Sydney and Melbourne, you can basically throw a dart and hit a property and the odds of it going up are pretty good because the reality is Sydney and Melbourne are kind of big and you know, robust and they've got, uh, well, you know, they've got no extra space. So the Brisbane I know is an awesome place. It is made up primarily of five major local government areas. You've got Brisbane, which is the biggest local government area in the world. Now, I want you to understand what this does to Brisbane. It really makes it a really energetic, smart city. In Sydney, we have 37 local councils. In Melbourne, a very similar amount. When you have 30 different, 37 local councils, you have a lot of posturing when it comes to the city's growth. In Sydney, councils talking to each other to create infrastructure just delays uh, huge amounts of productivity as governments don't speak to, e to each other. There are more people living in the local government area of Brisbane than there are in Adelaide. And we need to understand that Queensland is a state of four and a half million people. Two and a half million people live in Greater Brisbane. 1.5 million people live in the local government area of Brisbane. In other words, there are five councils. Brisbane, Moreton Bay, Redlands, Logan and Ipswich. And because there are such few councils, things get done. Roads get built, transport gets created, and we are really seeing efficiency at a very smart level when it comes to Brisbane. Now, I always say and coach people, depending on how much they have to spend, I always say Brisbane's local government areas kind of have a ranking of most sophisticated to least sophisticated, most wealth to least wealth. Brisbane local government area is really where most of the wealth is, followed by Redlands, which is a really uh, beautiful part of Brisbane by the bay, followed by Moreton Bay, which is also, for the most part, a really beautiful pocket of Brisbane. Then you have the lower socioeconomic areas, which are Ipswich and Logan. Obviously, depending on what you can spend, you want to potentially go for the best local government area and eventually, as your buying power whittles away, you might want to invest in one of the less expensive local government areas. But understand, obviously, without, uh, you know, sounding, uh, you know, without prejudicing anyone, obviously, to a Brisbane hardcore local who's middle class, you know, they could never see themselves living in Logan. That's just how the Brisbane person would think. They wouldn't want to get into Ipswich. They would want to get out of Ipswich. That's the uh, philosophy of their mindset. However, you know, typically Moreton Bay, Redlands or, or, um, or Brisbane, you know, it's like, wow, I'm, you know, I'm owning real estate in Brisbane. So it is a street-by-street street marketplace and it does have some nuances which I think are really important for people to understand. Now, as I say, I'm a business Bedouin. I've been living part-time in Brisbane since 2009. I live in Sydney. But I also have a property in Brisbane. I literally go between the two cities. Up until coronavirus, I was more or less between the two cities every week. The Brisbane I know is an awesome city 
And I have to say, it's fair to say that a lot of property investors you speak to are still waiting for capital growth. Brisbane's capital growth, though, has been occurring for quite a long time now. However, it has been what we call top-down capital growth. In other words, the best areas have been getting growth because they're in demand and sales volumes have been high and people have been fighting over some of the better suburbs of Brisbane. There's been literally capital growth for the last couple of years if you've been willing to spend a million, two million, three million dollars. In fact, Tenerife, which is Brisbane's and Queensland's most expensive suburb, has gone up a million dollars over the last 24 months. However, if you bought, I don't know, a property in Ipswich, you may have only seen $10,000 capital growth because the growth in this cycle has been based on cheaper credit and people going, I want to upgrade to my cheaper credit and my more expensive property. So fundamentally, Brisbane has had some pretty good growth levels, which have really been seen for the most part in its more prestige end of the marketplace. What I will say about Brisbane is it really is a city now for millennials. Brisbane suffered over the last two decades a brain drain, a skills drain. Smart young people growing up in Brisbane greatest wish was to leave Brisbane and come to Sydney. So many young people left Brisbane and made homes in Sydney. However, today with the cost of real estate in Sydney, that is no longer the case. People in Brisbane don't grow up wishing and dreaming to get out of Brisbane. They grow up wanting to add value to Brisbane to improve the economy, to improve the urbanity, to change the streetscape, to add businesses. So Brisbane today is really one of the most fun, dynamic cities anywhere in Australia. If you want a great night out, go to Brisbane. I mean, you'll have more memories there in one night than you will in any other Australian cities. Do yourself a favour, go out on the gas, get drunk and have an awesome night out in Fortitude Valley. You'll have one of the best nights of your life. You will wake up with a kebab on you. You will literally have one of the most fun uh, hangover experience nights you'll ever have. Why? Because Brisbane is a millennial city. We need to understand how important that is right now. Millennials are the largest group in society. And when your city is now a millennial city, it really does mean the inertia of that city is got a lot of longevity. There is not the aging population. There is young people going through a wealth uh system of turning 30 and who will eventually turn 40. As they turn 30 to 40, they're going to have more money and of course respend that, particularly in the real estate economy. So I think the next 10 years for Brisbane is going to be absolutely fantastic. And a lot of that is to do with the retention of its people. People no longer leave Brisbane. They want to go to Brisbane. And this is creating as well a really good form of tenant. If you want to own real estate in Brisbane, you do have the choice to rent to very smart people. Smart people that work in smart jobs, in knowledge jobs, medical jobs, uh, construction jobs. And 
the ability to get really good rent from those people. Remember, owning real estate and building wealth is about being able to also work with tenants who are your partners who at some point you need to put the rents up on. Right now, lots of smart people in Brisbane who are tenants are all getting a rent increase. But more importantly, they can pay the rent increase because the economics of the city is very good for the idea of smart community. Now, as I say, I've been going to this city for a long time and I can tell you the undercurrent of sophistication is big. People are investing in wellness businesses, in knowledge businesses. There are multinational companies investing in Brisbane. There are huge transport companies investing in Brisbane. It is a real attraction magnet right now. And I think it's fair to say when you look and study the migration charts, Brisbane is an absolute winner from coronavirus. People are, for the first time, falling out of love with bigger cities or more boring cities and going, you know what, let's head up to Brisbane and make a fist of it. But you don't migrate unless you can find a job. And I think it's an absolute quality conversation to say that because Brisbane is a smart city, it also has the pillars to offer great employment. You know, a couple of years ago, I got to have dinner with then Premier uh, of Queensland, a guy called Campbell Newman. Everyone hated Campbell in the end. They chased him out of town. But uh, interesting talking to Campbell and, you know, I asked him, you know, what are the big pillars of the Brisbane economy? And he said, look, you know, Queensland is such an interesting place because the pillars behind it are quite fundamental to the whole Australian economy. You've got tourism, you've got agriculture, mining and construction as the major pillars that make up Queensland. And there's no marshmallow economy. Fundamentally, you've got the food bowl of the world. You've got some of the biggest minerals anywhere on earth. Then you've got construction, tourism, and of course, underneath all of that, you've got this new level of sophistication. Now, why I love smart cities is I love the idea that when a city is affordable, the attraction magnet at a global level is huge. If you're a world famous cardiologist living in Germany, and you are lured to Sydney, you've got a problem because you might earn more money, but guess what? The cost of housing in Sydney is the most expensive other than Hong Kong in the world. So do you really migrate from Germany to Sydney, from Munich to Sydney, and pay 10 times what a property is worth to earn another $100,000? The answer is no. But smart cities, new world cities like Brisbane, have this massive opportunity to transform their situation to attract people. And really, the Brisbane I know is an attraction magnet. I mean, if you've never been to Howard Smith Wharf on uh, the New Farm Peninsula, you haven't lived. Like, you've got to go and spend a night out in New Farm and you'll just have the night of your life. From an urban change, Brisbane again just creates some most magical ways to live, whether that's a lime scooter ride from uh, an inner city suburb to the CBD, whether that's a walkway that is built on top of the river itself stretching out kilometres where you're literally walking on water, Brisbane absolutely is a bit of a game changer when it comes to sophistication. In some ways, Sydney is becoming like 
the annoying old dad, like the gospodar across the road. Sydney's become the gospodar. It doesn't know what it's doing. It's like created lockout laws and then it's, doesn't want people to party. It doesn't want people to have fun. It's like a police state. The gospodars are everywhere. Brisbane's the polar opposite. It's like, let's have a light show. Let's light up the city. Let's build sophisticated culture and people will come to the culture. And if you get to spend some time in Brisbane, you'll start to understand that Brisbane is very much a placemaking city, placemaking. Now, I recently did a podcast on the place economy. And if you haven't listened to it, I encourage you to go back, look up the place economy podcast to explain exactly what placemaking is. But fundamentally, if I was asked to ask you to close your eyes and think of Brisbane, what image would come to your head? Well, I guarantee you, probably nothing. Probably the guy in the Brisbane Broncos shorts at the airport with his testicle hanging out. So here's the thing. Brisbane needs an image. Sydney's got an image, right? Sydney's got an image. If you think of Sydney, its brand is the Opera House. Its brand is the Harbour Bridge. Melbourne's got an image. Its brand's the Australian Open, Melbourne Cup. It's Flinders Street Station. It's Burke Street. It's got like this image that instantly pops in your mind. When we think about Brisbane, we don't have an image. But based on the idea of a place economy, in other words, you build a place that people will come to, your economy changes. And in the podcast around place economics, I explain the Bilbao effect. In Spain, there's an innocuous city called Bilbao. No one ever went there. They all went to Seville. They went to Barcelona. They never went to Bilbao. Bilbao built the Guggenheim. Now, travelers that go to Europe want to see the artwork in the Guggenheim, so they go to the Guggenheim. Bilbao is on the map. Brisbane is going on the map in a big way. If you're not aware of it, Brisbane is building the Echo Entertainment Casino. It is literally the most interesting building architecturally brought to Australia since the Sydney Opera House. If you've ever been to the Marina Bay Sands in Singapore, you would probably get an understanding of what Brisbane is doing. Brisbane is building architecturally, a very famous statement. And there is a couple of purposes to doing this. Brisbane is not typically a tourist city. People land in Brisbane, they connect to Cairns, go to the Great Barrier Reef, they land in Brisbane, go down to the Gold Coast to see the theme parks and obviously go to the beach. However, Brisbane has identified once you create a place similar to Bilbao, similar to the Guggenheim, people will come into that economy and get to know the economy. And of course, the overnight stay or the two-day stay to see the great piece of architecture, the great building, will occur. No different to why people go to Paris to see the Eiffel Tower. When you get there, it's like not even that good. You're just like, I've got to do it. I've got to get the photo with the Eiffel Tower. No one tells you you're going to get robbed by, you know, crazy people waiting in line while you're uh, sitting there for four and a half hours trying to climb a still object, right? But the point is it drags you there and you spend your money there. Brisbane is going into a place where it is going to be a world uh, landmark city. People from Asia will see this building, particularly as a casino, and go, you know what, we need to go to Brisbane and check it out. So big things ahead for Brisbane from a brand Brisbane point of view. Now, when we think about, obviously, Brisbane's 
most recent history and performance in real estate. Despite some marketplaces doing very well from a capital growth point of view, and some locations and some properties, broadly speaking, Brisbane has had a pretty rough trot over the last 10 years. When we look at the history of Brisbane, it's really important to understand how growth has unfolded. In 2004 to 2007, Brisbane literally doubled, even tripled in value at that period. In 2007, Brisbane's value and Sydney's value were 7% apart. In 2007, Sydney was going through a low and Brisbane was going through a high. The two marketplaces were virtually the same price, 7% apart. Today, they're more than 120% apart. So what that tells us, at some point, the two cities need to come closer together in value. Once upon a time, there was a rhetoric around, you lived in Sydney, you earned more money. That no longer exists. People in Brisbane earn basically the same amount of money as people in Sydney. So Brisbane is what we would call an equitable marketplace. It's got low property values and good wages. Sydney is what we call an inequitable property market. It's got good wages but high property values. So it's a lot harder for Sydney people to do the same thing as Brisbane people. Brisbane carries very low debt. When we look at the history of Brisbane, a couple of key things have held back Brisbane's growth. As I alluded to from a behavioural broad statement, the invention of the Gold Coast. But then when we drill down to living with the Gold Coast, starting from really the last uh, 10 years of fundamental microeconomic activity, in 2008, just as Brisbane had reached its peak, the world had the global financial crisis. And of course, that sent most property sideways or down in value. 2009, the global financial crisis was really the year we lived in it because it hit in October 2008. Remember, the growth of Brisbane's property market peaked in 2007. By 2010 and 11, Brisbane had a series of floods, one of them very devastating, which when we look at the history of why that flood occurred, it was mismanagement by government. Government was literally telling people not to have a shower so they could fill up the dam. They filled up the dam to 95% and then torrential rain came. They had to release the water and, of course, they flooded their own city. A lot of people are fearful of floods in Brisbane, really dam management. You'll probably never see a flood again of that magnitude in Brisbane. So by 2011, we had a real uh, bad situation in Brisbane. It wasn't going to grow. It just had had a flood. By 2014, we had easy credit in Australia. We had low-cost money to borrow from banks. We had foreign investors buying in Australia. And we had a building boom on our hands. Brisbane, by 2015 and 16, was very oversupplied of real estate. Lots of stock had come into the marketplace and it was fairly well getting some pretty medium to low press around, well, Brisbane's apartment market and housing market's going to collapse because it's been overrun with too much stock. Then in 2017, we had the great credit squeeze. We had the disappearance of credit. And as I say, where credit flows, real estate grows, and credit wasn't flowing anywhere in Australia. Brisbane wasn't special. But as you can see, there were 
four structural things that occurred, the GFC, the floods, the oversupply, and the credit squeeze, which really all happened over a 10-year period, which held back Brisbane. And today, Brisbane is without question such good value from a possible future growth point of view and also from a rental return point of view. You can get suburbs where you can earn 5 or 6% growth and 5 or 6% rental return. The accumulative overall return of that is massive. Remember, Brisbane is about diversifying. If you're not from Brisbane, you're from Sydney or Melbourne, Adelaide, and you're thinking of, well, I've heard about buying in Brisbane, but it scares me. I want you to listen to this podcast. This is why I'm doing this show today, because really it is a marketplace which is intriguing and it's on the move. It's full of millennials. It's changing its brand. It is a city which if you wake up In 10 years' time and you don't have real estate in it, you will be kicking yourself. Remember, Australia really does grow through the idea of pie, population, economics, and infrastructure. Economics is just another word for employment. The population at the moment around Australia is suffering because a lot of students aren't coming into Australia. And a lot of new skill is not coming into Australia. But guess what? Brisbane's population right now is not suffering. It is growing because people are deciding, you know what? I can do what I do and I'm going to do it from a cheaper place. Economic refugees are flooding out of Sydney and parts of Melbourne and going into Brisbane, pumping up the population density of the city. We know that from a taxpayer's point of view, Always the infrastructure projects are going to be in our big cities, whether that's Melbourne, Sydney or Brisbane. Half of Australia's population live in those cities, live in those cities. You know how important literally Melbourne, Brisbane and Sydney are? In World War II, the Australian government created a concept of defence from the war which was raging in the Pacific with the Japanese, the concept of the defence was known as the Brisbane Line. The Brisbane Line stretched essentially from Brisbane to Adelaide. The bottom southeast corner of Australia was considered the only thing to defend till literally the end. And so we need to understand Australia's population is fundamentally in the southeast corner of a huge continent. So when it comes to infrastructure, we know the spend's going to be in Sydney, Melbourne, Brisbane. We know the taxpayer who lives in Rockhampton's not going to receive a result from their taxes. It's going to go into Brisbane. So it's an interesting paradigm for us as property investors, because we need to understand that that's where the people are going to live, that's where the spending's going to happen, that's where the growth's going to happen. But I also love Brisbane because it is a city designed around future jobs. We know we live in a disruptive economy. If you've listened to my podcast, you'll understand that disruption is a big element of what we are going through right now. Jobs are on the line. Jobs get recreated, new businesses actually get invented because of innovation, technology, big, big disruptors like blockchain tech, artificial intelligence, robotics, energy storage, all these things play a part. When we look at the future of Brisbane, because it is a new world city, it also has a massive innovative structured to it that attracts new enterprise and jobs of tomorrow. So you as a property investor can absolutely pigeon pair what you buy with future economics in the Brisbane property marketplace. And I can say that not many cities in Australia are set up for future economics as well as Brisbane is. It is certainly a marketplace you can get good value for money. 
Now, when you think about investing in Sydney, if you wanted to spend five hundred thousand uh, dollars on a home, you probably have to go about eighty kilometers from the city, sixty, seventy. 50, 40, whatever the number is, it's a long way away, right? And so you're probably not buying location, location, location. You're simply getting into the endless pile of mediocre real estate. The opposite is in for Brisbane. $500,000, $600,000. You can buy a brand new home for $600,000, 11 kilometers to the city of Brisbane. Now, you've got to understand people who made a lot of money in Sydney quite often come from older families, right? It's what we call old money. They bought that version of real estate in their family three dynasties ago. The interesting thing about Brisbane is you can almost set your family up for life by choosing really good locations in Brisbane. As I say, Brisbane's an interesting city. It's a very long city. It's 200 kilometers long. It's wide. There's a big, big, big uh, expansive landmass to consider buying in. And I can tell you in simple layman's terms, if you choose a good location in Brisbane, you're going to be rewarded for your investment, whether that's a location with a view, location in a school zone, a location in a green belt area, a location next to smart economics like hospitals, you're going to be rewarded because people are soon realizing it's abnormal to buy a brand new home 11 to 15 kilometers to the CBD in our third biggest city. You can't even do that in Darwin. You can't even do that in Adelaide, you can't even do that in Perth. Value for money is absolutely exponential in Brisbane. And a lot of it is to do with the fact that Brisbane hasn't grown because of the four problems I mentioned earlier from the GFC to the Royal Commission and um, debt reduction program Australia was put on. So we have literally been bought time if we haven't bought there. In other words, Brisbane should actually probably be a lot more expensive than what it is today. And it just got unlucky. But guess what? That luck is about to shift and Brisbane is well and truly on its way to becoming a capital growth marketplace. We know the cycle is suggesting growth. And the GOAT has come out and forecast 20% capital growth. Yes, the GOAT, the greatest of all time, Bill Evans, chief economist of Westpac, has predicted for the first time in his history that in 2022, Brisbane property values will rise by 20%. 20%. If you own a $500,000 property, you're going to make $100,000. Do you really want to miss that one when the goat comes out and says do it? The goat is the number one forecaster in Australia, Bill Evans. If the goat says it's good for him, it's got to be good for you. With real estate, don't try and invent your own world. Listen to the people who are good at what they do. The goat says the market's going up, the momentum of the market's moving. Within Three to four years, you will have missed the boat and you will be buying real estate when it's too late. Brisbane's property market is undersupplied. In 2015 and 16, it was oversupplied. Now it's completely undersupplied. There's some great reports around uh, easy to find. Chartercat Kramer have put out a great report this year alone in the inner workings of Brisbane, in the inner five kilometres. There has only been 300 development applications approved for a city of 2.5 million people. That is nothing. Obviously, across Brisbane, there have run out of land. Uh, The federal government's boost, the $25,000 boost to buy a brand new construction of property. Everyone's gone out and done it. 
Every millennial's bought themselves a brand new home. What this has done has created the disappearance and the absorption of land. There is literally not enough land left that is registered and ready to go. So, of course, there is more demand than there is supply right now in the Brisbane property market. It won't always be that way. There are some big land masses in Brisbane that can be opened up to accommodate a larger and bigger population. Remember, Brisbane is shooting for a size city of Sydney. In 30 years, Brisbane will be the size of Sydney. So, of course, new land corridors will open up, new properties will be built. But right now, we can buy proximity. Just think about the idea that if you bought in a great street right now, in a great suburb in Brisbane, and in 30 years, the population will have doubled and land areas would have sprawled even further and further. Just think about the value proposition that has on your asset. Think about if you could have bought in Kirribilli, Sydney, or uh, you know Port Melbourne 20 years ago before everything went bonkers. You really do have that opportunity in Brisbane, and that is one thing I'm so intrigued by. And of course, me personally, I'm uh, have bought and uh, am buying um, in those really awesome sort of pockets. Brisbane's yield is awesome. Like you can get a 5% rental return. Remember, you can borrow money from say 2.5 to 3% and you're renting it out at 5%. You're buying it at 3, you're renting it at 5. Now compare that to Sydney, which is more like about a 3% return. You can service better. You can um, just get yourself a better location. Remember, if you're looking, for example, in Sydney and you're getting a 3% rental return and borrowing money at 3%, potentially you're having to buy an inferior location. You can do the polar opposite in Brisbane. Instead of buying an inferior Sydney or Melbourne location, you can buy a superior Brisbane location by virtue of the rental returns of the economy. So don't underestimate the onward flow of wealth of choosing a better location over a less uh, you know, impressive location. Just to give you a bit of you know, basic median values of what you can expect in Brisbane, I mean, Brisbane's house price, on average, $560,000. Brisbane apartment price, on average, $375,000. Compare that to Sydney. Sydney's average house price, $1.1 million. Its average apartment price, around $775,000. So you can see you can get two for one in Brisbane. Two properties, then you can get one in Sydney. So hence why a lot of Sydney people are selling down their assets and going to Brisbane debt-free. They're literally selling their Sydney home and going to Brisbane to live debt-free which is just phenomenal. Over the last year, 22,000 people have left New South Wales and moved to Brisbane. Brisbane also has what I would call the best designed real estate in Australia for your money. I think a lot of us need to comprehend the value proposition of newer properties in Brisbane is so amazing, so amazing. The cost to build and what you get, the size, the square meter rate, the design, uh, the, the quality is just so good compared to Sydney. For example, in Sydney, one of the challenges we have is the cost of land is so expensive, everyone has to skimp on the quality of build. And that is creeping into Melbourne as well because people are paying so much for land to build on it you have to compromise. Otherwise, you simply wouldn't be able to afford, you know, new construction in those marketplaces. When we see on the news all of these horrible building stories, they're usually Sydney building stories because builders in Sydney and developers have to skimp. Polar opposite in Brisbane. Because land values are really well priced, you can build and design absolutely world-class dwellings 
And as a property owner, you can end up with very functional and livable real estate. And I don't think this should be underestimated because the functionality of really good real estate is the lifelong effect of owning that is just so powerful. If you've got a really well-built property and you're a property investor, you can hold that thing for 40, 50 years. And if it's designed well from the get-go and built well, you're going to have less repairs, less overall problems. Brisbane's attracting like some of the world's best architects building, designing properties there. Koichi de Carter is designing a building in Brisbane. Koichi. Koichi has designed Google Tokyo. Koichi has designed the uh, art gallery in the United Arab Emirates. He's doing buildings in Brisbane. Bait Smart, the oldest architecture firm in Australia, a absolute rock star architect, a star architect, a star architect is designing buildings now in Brisbane. Such is the brand of Brisbane now that it's gone from little country town to weird Brisbane Bronco pant people to Koichi Takata, to Bait Smart. This is huge, man. Like you're going to start to see some really sophisticated builds and designs and Really, Brisbane's on the map. And I'll tell you what, Brisbane is renovating itself. It's the one city in Australia that is absolutely reinventing its look and feel. Whether that's Brisbane Live, the Queen's Wharf project, which is includes the Echo Entertainment Casino, which will rival the Marina Bay Sands of Singapore, whether it's infrastructure like the Cross River Rail, where it's the upgrade of the Woolongabba Station. Brisbane Metro, which is like a tram service being added to Brisbane. Victoria Park, which is uh, unfolding in Brisbane. One of the downsides of Brisbane CBD area is unlike Sydney and Melbourne, it hasn't historically had beautiful parklands. If you go to Hyde Park, Sydney or Centennial Park, Sydney, or the Botanical Gardens, Melbourne, they're right near the city and they're a great place for locals to enjoy the city at a park level. Brisbane's got a small Botanical Gardens. What it has done is reclaimed land in Kelvin Grove. What it is going to do is build a huge parkland known as Victoria Park, which is going to be a Beautiful, beautiful piece of public realm, which again just adds so much to the value proposition of Brisbane. For the first time in Brisbane's history, it's going to have a park in the city, which is really sizable, which is going to attract tourists from all over the world and locals. It's got beautiful river transformation. The CBD is transforming its waterways to beautiful cafes and restaurants and bars and the waterfront of Brisbane is just one of the best places you can possibly go. If you want a good night out, other than the Fortitude Valley experience, waking up with a kebab, you'll, uh, you'll love the waterfront areas. And it is building new bridges. Brisbane is the city of bridges. It's got a new bris- bridge that is literally approved crossing the river from Kangaroo Point to right in the CBD. Brisbane as well has just created a new runway. In other words, it is going to double its output of people flying into Brisbane. It's taken about three years to build the second runway of Brisbane Airport. Pilots actually hate landing in Brisbane because they're always asked to circle. That's not going to happen into the future. Brisbane's uh, new um, aerodrome is essentially open. Coronavirus has come along and slowed it, uh, slowed it down or the use of it down. But this is a beautiful thing and we call this a market mover. 
Quite often in real estate, we're looking for market movers of an economy. You double your airport, you double the ability for people to come to your state. That is a market mover. That is an economic fundamental of growth. More money in your economy, more growth. Brisbane cruise ship terminal, the Brisbane quarter, Queen Street, West Village, the new arts centre. Brisbane is reinventing its look and feel. It is the one city in Australia which is really renovating itself. And I think when you go to Brisbane, probably circa 2023, you will not recognise the city. It will be an absolute rock star of urbanity, of change, of inspiration, of food, of culture, of arts. And overall, it is going to be a pretty sophisticated city and an absolute people magnet driven by a very, very large demographic of society, the millennials changing the world. The fuddy-duddy market, probably city. The old gospodar market, Sydney. Hey, I tell you what, if you haven't heard, Brisbane is the front runner to win the 2032 Olympic Games. If you've ever thought there was a goal in mind of renovating a city, I can tell you it leads to the idea of an Olympics. And Brisbane really is favorite to win. It's Brisbane's Olympics to lose. And I think given the experience Tokyo has just gone through, with having to postpone the coronavirus and, of course, many of the other continents around the world having far more serious impacts based on just how dense their populations are, Brisbane will win the 2032 Olympics. I tell you what, if you don't own real estate, Brisbane, 10 years before it, you've got rocks in your head. Hey! Thanks so much for your time. I hope you've enjoyed the show. Hope you've enjoyed learning about Brisbane as a property market choice, as a property investor. Thanks for your time again. Hey, make sure you leave me a review. I need some reviews. I'm jumping on Prozac. I'm getting depressed because I'm not getting enough reviews. Give us a review. Uh, Hey, thanks for your time. Love you. And I'm going to leave you. Sam Saggers signing off. Thanks for tuning in to the Urban Property Investor. To never miss an episode, make sure you subscribe to the podcast on your favorite app or on YouTube. And I would love it if you could give the show a rating and share it with your friends and family. In between episodes, you can always keep in touch with me by connecting on social media over Facebook, Instagram, or LinkedIn. Until we meet again on the next episode of the Urban Property Investor, take care and bye for now.